and just listen to this. It's classic. To clean up the mess, to cut taxes for the wealthiest 1%, lower them for the middle class, to support families, to start moving forward on gun control in real ways while the conservatives cozy up to the American gun lobby. We continue to step up and keep it connected. Wow. Leader of the opposition. Wow, is he ever losing control of himself? <laughs> oh my goodness. Screaming and hollering like that. Mr. Speaker, exactly. it's his press release yeah. that says that in Toronto, auto thefts are up 300% since he took office. Yeah, so Pierre Polly was trying to talk about auto thefts, and Justin Trudeau had to tell everybody that the Liberals have cut taxes for the wealthiest 1% of Canadians. <laughs> he was so hyped here, so incredibly souped up. Was he on something? I don't know. I can't say. But uh, you, you might recall that when Trudeau's plane, government aircraft, was grounded in India after the last G20 conference, there were reports, or at least one significant report, that cocaine was found on the plane. Now, is there some connection here? I don't know. I can't say. I don't know Justin Trudeau personally, and certainly he's not somebody I'd want to know personally. So I don't know what his pr private habits are. But he certainly appeared to be a little over the top last week in question period. And he often does. And that's when he starts to stutter and he stammers. And <laughs> And he really does look like he's completely out of control. And of course he is. He is out of control as the Prime Minister of Canada. He's out of control as the leader of the Liberal Party. He's out of control as Justin Trudeau, the human being. So let's let's not acknowledge that. So what is he trying to do? What what, what was his other broad initiative this week? Well, he seems to want to he, he wants to start his own housing company. Now he's already selling heat pumps, and you've seen that one. Where he he remember how he pretends he's he's installing a heat pump in your house, <laughs> and he's telling you that these are the panacea for energy use in this country. All you have to do is plug your heat pump in, and no problem. Problem is, yes, they're going, they're actually going to break down the electrical grid because we don't have enough power. If everybody gets one. The other significant problem is heat pumps don't work in Canadian winters in the temperatures we have, so they're useless. But Trudeau's out there hawking them on his YouTube site, which about, what, 500 people have subscribed to since he put it up, what, a year and a half ago? You know, not, uh, not very impressive, Justin. People just don't take you seriously. But he's out ha hawking heat pumps. Stephen Gilbo has become a car salesman now. Stephen Gilbo, of course, he's out there with the ads about electric vehicles and how electric vehicles are the answer. Yeah, they don't work. And the batteries are pretty well defunct within a year or two. You can't get a replacement battery. You can't recharge the vehicle anywhere. And if you do... If they recharge for about maybe 100 miles and you got to get them recharged again. And if you're recharging them overnight in your house, they take up so much power, you won't be able to run your washing machine that week. So don't think that's an answer either. But Trudeau now has found another calling. He's found another reason to go on television. And I'm sure this will be way over his way on top of his website as well. But here he is showing you how the liberals are going to be building homes for Canadians. Problem is, if you if you had some work to be done in your backyard, on in your house, don't invite Justin Trudeau over to help out because he has trouble even hitting a nail on the head. Now, is there something metaphorical about that? Does Trudeau ever hit the nail on the head in anything he says or does? No, but he physically can't do it either. Watch this hilarious exhibit of his of his nail pounding skills.
40 times. He had to hit that nail 40 times. Not very efficient, Justin. Not very efficient at all. But but I don't know if he's ever done a real day's of, day of work in his life. It's arguable that he probably hasn't. I don't think he knows very much about any kind of manual labor because, you know, he really hasn't had to work that hard in his life. And I'm sure he's done nothing around the house. Maybe that's one of the reasons he's separated. I don't know, but Justin Trudeau is clearly unhinged. The liberals are going crazy about these transgender policies in Alberta, which as far as anybody with common sense can determine, are pretty sane, are pretty rational. They're not going to lead to some epidemic of bullying in the classroom. Not at all. This is not what they're geared toward. What they are really about is maintaining and recognizing a very basic right in Canada, the right of parents to raise their children and not to have to surrender that right to the state or to the liberal government or to the liberal party or to activists or to the LGBTQ community or to gender ideologists. Parents have a right to raise their children as they see fit. That's why I applauded Pierre Polyev during a Christmas interview with Rex Murphy, where he said he hopes the Conservative Party will be identified as mind your own business party, because it's time for the state to stop interfering in parents' lives and individuals' lives. Let them raise their children as they see fit. That is not just a, a, a foundation of Canadian democracy. It's a, it's a foundational element of Western civilization going back millennia, not just centuries, but millennia. And that is something that Daniel Smith has recognized, Pierre Pauli has recognized, and my goodness, Maxime Bernier of the People's Party of Canada recognizes that. The socialist NDP, the liberals, this ungodly coalition propping each other up does not recognize that. And for that matter, neither does the bloc, which is a horrible excuse for a political party. They don't recognize it either. But Canadians do. And I tell you, Justin Trudeau's on the wrong side of Canada. He's on the wrong side of history. He's on the wrong side of just about everything because everything he does is always based on a, a fierce determination to stay in power and to tell you what to do, how to live, what to think. And there's worse coming with censorship. And we'll be talking about that in the coming days. Hi, this is David Craven from Craven's Right and Stand on Guard. Join the resistance, resolve to resist. Become a member of this station. I've been practicing journalism in one form or another for over 30 years. I've worked in print, radio, and television for a lot of prestigious publications and media outlets. I was an Armed Forces Public Affairs Officer. I worked in Parliament Hill. I know how Ottawa works, and I know how corrupt federal government can be. But you can play a part in opposing Justin Trudeau's government and Justin Trudeau's plans for Canada. You can become a part of the Creighton's Right Resistance. Now, I urge you today, please support this station in any way you can. Ring that bell, subscribe, because that ensures you're at least going to continue to be able to watch these episodes. You'll beat the algorithm. But more importantly, I need your financial support. I hate to ask, but that's what I'm doing. I made a decision to pursue independent media because I believed it was the best possible route for me to take as a journalist and as a concerned citizen of Canada. So you can become a part of that. And at only $5, you can become a part of that on YouTube, on Substack, and with Buy Me A Copy, a one-time donation. But I need your support. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. If you've already done that, if you're already supporting the station, thank you. But if you haven't, 
Make that decision today. 